After a season of overachieving and exceeding all expectations, the Minnesota Timberwolves have been bounced from the playoffs by the Memphis Grizzlies in six games. Uh, it's hard not to be disappointed, even though this did exceed expectations this season, uh, because they did hold the leads of double digits, including 25 points or more, in at least three of these games that they lost. Uh, the collapses that they endured multiple times are devastating, and it's devastating to the fan base, and it it's going to lead to a lot of questions in the offseason. I think that, without a doubt, Anthony Edwards has proved that he belongs on that stage. I think he exceeded all expectations for this being his first playoff series, but I also think that the team is going to have to start moving in a different direction so that they can build around Edwards and maximize all his potential. Because whatever whatever this was did not work. And maybe it's, you know, maybe it's early early playoff jitters. Maybe it's it's that lack of experience in the postseason. But one thing I kept thinking about as this series went on and the games got tougher and tougher and the things got everything got chippier and chippier is I kept thinking about Jimmy Butler and what he said about Cat and Andrew Wiggins when he left the team. When he said that, you know, basically, you're the number one picks, you have all these tools, and you don't want it as bad as I want it. And that I don't think that's nothing for for fans or for analysts, journalists, whoever. The, no one really can speak on that outside of that locker room. But it's hard to look at this team in the terms of like, yeah, they're a young team that just got to the playoffs. Because Carl Anthony Towns, D'Angelo Russell, the two uh, max contract players on the team, uh, they're in their like seventh and eighth or seventh season, I think. I think this next season, 2023, will be their eighth season. So, like, it's not like they're Anthony Edwards in his second year exceeding expectations and growing. It, it, they, they are who they're going to be. And I'm a very big D'Angelo Russell fan. But the Timberwolves are paying him $30 million a year to not be on the floor in the last seven or eight minutes of the fourth quarter of today's do-or-die, must-win elimination playoff game. They had Jordan McLaughlin who was wonderful, who absolutely exceeded expectations, I think, for what he thought his role would be or what for fans expected his role to be. He was great. But having him out there instead of the guard that you're paying $30 million for, your guard who you needed during the regular season because without him, your offense was pretty standard ISO, you go, I go type stuff. It's damning that Chris Finch wouldn't have him out there at all. Like Occasionally they've done the offense for defense swaps in late game scenarios, but not having him out there at all. He had one foul. It wasn't like he was, you know, in foul trouble, turning the ball over, any of that. It, it probably was purely either shot selection or defense. And that's a really tough spot to be in with a player you're paying $30 million for. But he's also one of... Carl Anthony Towns' best friends. And the whole reason he's there is because the team wanted to make Carl Towns happy. So, do you risk alienating your, your franchise player? Well, after this whole series, maybe the team thinks Anthony Edwards is the franchise player. I've heard a lot of talk and a lot of rumors. Someone suggested a Rudy Gobert for Carl Towns trade. I, I will believe that when I see it. It makes my brain want to explode, but I will believe that when I see it. But like just thinking about it, I don't know I don't know what to expect from this Timberwolves group. I don't know what to expect from management, from Chris Finch, from the new owners. Uh, it's just it's such an odd situation to find themselves in this crossroads. I, on the one hand, Cat holds a ton of franchise records. He's been one of the best players they've had um really in decades, since the early Kevin Garnett years, since Kevin Love. So on the one hand, you don't want to just get rid of a player that is beloved like that by fans. But on the other hand, Anthony Edwards is clearly the truth. This kid is clearly made for the moment. And whether it's for better or worse, he is the moment is not too big for him. He was stepping into shots. He, he like, airballed a, a like, 
floater attempts in the third quarter, I think it was. Like, he is not shy about hoisting those shots. So that's already one step that kind of is out of the way. Like, you don't have to worry about him getting over the playoff hump. Like, he was just fine. Um, so now, with him so young, with him only going to be going into his third year, with, you know, hopefully a year or two away from whenever he would sign a big extension... You know, the team has to kind of start thinking, like, is this the best that we can do with this group of guys? And I don't know if the solution is to to trade one or both of Carl Towns or D'Angelo Russell, because I don't know which teams would want one or both of Carl Towns and D'Angelo Russell. Because this playoff series, so D'Angelo talked about a little bit with inconsistent shooting, poor shot selection. Um, he does still have unbelievable court vision and passing which makes life a lot easier for a lot of his teammates but with Carl Towns it's the fouls it's the silly dumb fouls that come in bunches it's two quick fouls up wait now it's three now he's got to sit the whole half and it just for a player in in the league for seven years it's crazy to still see him have those problems and part of the reason they were able to stay in this series so long is because Jaron Jackson Jr. had the same problem they, it was like a battle of who could foul more, who could get more egregious fouls. And yes, I will say the refer- the refs were terrible. It was terrible officiating uh, for the majority of this series. I think there was one game where uh, 62 free throws were attempted. Um, just crazy numbers, crazy numbers of free throws. Teams in the bonus within five minutes of a quarter. Just just unacceptable to, you know, the flow of... This should have been and still was one of the best series of the playoffs. But it could have been so much more if it had just been uninterrupted, up and down, fast-paced basketball. I, I still really enjoyed it. I think it was a great display for two really good young teams. I just don't know what Minnesota... Like, do they look at this last year as an overachievement? Do they look at this as exposing their, their flaws, their needs? It's just, it's really interesting to think about Patrick Beverly is getting older. He absolutely transformed that defense and that team's attitude. You want you kind of have to start wondering what's going to happen with that. Um, Jaden McDaniels too, man, that kid put on a show tonight. He was absolutely, he was clutch. He was huge for them. Uh, this whole series really, but tonight in particular. So you kind of start to see that development coming. He's thrived since Chris Finch took over. He's become a more confident shooter. He's more confident in his ability to create for himself and for others. Jared Vanderbilt as well. Another player who thrived in in this regime, in this, in this Chris Finch-led team. And I'm really curious to see you know, what they're going to do, because I, I don't know if it's, if it's, you know, bring back the role players, but fill out the depth a little bit more, um, hope for another year of progression from Anthony Edwards, hope that Cat and D'Lo can continue to improve in the areas that they need to improve, or if they're going to just find trades and either recoup assets for draft picks for this next year or two, or just take swings on players like Gobert, like do like a cat for Gobert trade. It sounds crazy to say it out loud, but I really don't know. Like this is one of those teams where nothing would surprise me. So I guess looking at it, they're going to have tough decisions to make about guys like Torian Prince, who's uh, expiring contract this year. Guys like Malik Beasley, who found himself out of the starting lineup and into the uh, six man bench type role. And he was wildly inconsistent as well. He can still come in and hit like five threes, but he can also come in and and quickly shoot you right out of a game. So they're going to have tough choices. They're going to really have to sit down and look. And I think the fact that 60 or, yeah, $67 million of your cap space is tied up in two players that you aren't sure jive with your best player now, like, I don't know what you're supposed to do with that. Like, it looks like on court wise, it looks like the three of them get along. It looks like Edwards, D'Lo, and Cat get along well, and they've they've had moments where it looks like one is frustrated with the others, or you know maybe it's just reading too far into it. But there's times where it looks like some of the guys are frustrated with each other, and that's probably a natural thing because all three of them have probably pretty much been the man since. 
maybe they started playing basketball. I mean, <laughs> you never know. I, so I really, I don't know what to, what to make of this team. I don't know what they're going to want to do. I don't know if this is going to be something where they retool or if they just really swing big for, for these moves and try to make some major wholesale changes to the roster. I don't feel confident enough to say that either D'Lo or Cat have played their last game for the Timberwolves, but I'm confident enough that I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, this summer comes along and rumors start up about both of those guys maybe finding themselves in trades. Um, and, and, you know, with how good and how transcendent Anthony Edwards has been, I think anything is on the table. And I think that that's an extremely net positive for the Timberwolves because this was a franchise that did not have a lot of hope, but they had a rabid fan base that fought to keep the team in Minnesota. So I just, I really don't know. I don't know what the team is, is going to do. It seems like it's going to be one of those things where any rumor that comes out about them is going to sound true to me. I, I really don't know. Um, please, if you have Timberwolves thoughts, if you have thoughts on any, any potential roster moves or any of these players you'd like to see stay, go, any of that, please let me know in the comments what you think. Um, I'd love to hear from, uh, T-Wolves fans, NBA fans in general. I'd love to get your thoughts on, on this and what you thought about really the series as a whole. Um, yeah, so please, please let me know. And, uh, We'll be back. Uh, round two going to be starting up on Sunday. Um, I'll try to do more videos that aren't just like, hey, this team got eliminated um, as the second round picks up. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for watching.